Hi guys, we have here MacBook Pro 15 inch mid 2010. So, amazing machine. I have used it for 10 years without any issues. Well, without any issues. The main problem started when macOS switched to Apple Fire System. This came with High Sierra. And actually, this is the highest operating system you could install officially in this machine. With Apple Fire System, this computer was so slow when I switched from spinning drive to SSD, problem was solved, the system was amazing again. Imagine that. As I said, I have SSD on it, one terabyte to be more precise, and it kind of sits there doing nothing. If you have seen my ESXi series, I have installed in one episode ESXi on this Kingston, and I've changed my mind, switch it to a two terabytes crucial in another episode. Hoping this is the vinyl move, do not count on it, <laughs> I will put it on this Mac. And I want to revive it in a total different way. I will install Debian on it and I'm pretty sure it will work perfectly. So let's crack this open, switch the hard disks and you'll see what you can do with 11 years old computer. You see how easy you open it? I guess you, you've seen this crazy stuff here. I've removed a long time ago the super drive and I found this rack which has exactly the same size as the super drive and you can put a hard disk in it. Okay, so let's remove the disk. These boards, they sit on, on this rubber stuff. It's like a suspension. So in order to, to put the other one, you have to remove these four bolts. You see how easy you add and remove the disc? It's a real pleasure to work with this machine. I will put this back. If you do not have Linux on a stick, if you have Unix-like operating system, it's very easy to, to do it. You go on the website, you download the ISO, in our case Debian. If you do not have some fancy utility, you can just use DD. And that's it. DD is low level command. It's just copying from input to output like in our situation, input the ISO file, output the memory stick and you have exactly the same information which was in the ISO file on this memory stick and amazingly, if we are starting now this computer, you will see that it boots up to the Linux installer. We can choose graphical install or simple install, let's do graphical. The trackpad will not work but it will look better. Now it's loading the components from the USB stick. You have to remember that not everything is here. On this USB stick you do not have full installation of the Linux. It's just a basic system and you need internet connectivity in order to install it fully. You have to remember that. Now it's detecting the network interfaces. Okay. False name MBP. 15 local or nothing it doesn't matter now I have to put to root password it's mandatory a user account will have to be created in this simple installation mode you do not have any other choice so you will have to create a normal account which is my advice also if you would choose the expert installation, you will have the possibility to not create a normal account. This is not okay for a workstation. You do not want to navigate with your root account because you are open to unwanted situations like malware or stuff that you should not install and so on. You really want to be safe, so create a normal account. Okay, so you can use the largest continuous free space. This will mean 
or a single partition will be created on your disk and everything will be there fine by that no problem but maybe you want to learn more or you want to have the possibility to migrate quickly from one disk to another i would recommend to use lvm if you need encrypted you have the possibility to to create an encrypted partition your encrypted operating system there is this flash disk which has the installation this is our disk i will choose it and here you can choose separate home bar whatever you can put all files in one partition it's up to you i usually separate home var and tmp partitions there are various reasons why you should have slash home slash tmp and slash var separate at least you should have slash home separate because that is the place where you have all your files and in case of something you can back it up easily or you can reinstall the operating system and leave the home partition alone with slash var and slash tmp there are security reasons why you should keep them separate this is my recommendation to have at least slash home slash var and slash tmp separate there are also other reasons other considerations which i do not have time now to explain but if you are curious let me know and i can create a full story about it if you are new to linux you should know that you do not have partition like in windows you do not have c d whatever you have slash everything starts with slash not backslash which you find in windows but forward slash forward slash is the starting point for everything that is on your operating system even if it's on memory or on internal disk or external disks or whatever everything starts from slash okay so we have slash home slash tmp and slash var now it's installing the base system base system you can install without the need of internet connection once you install the base system you will have the possibility to install other packages and you will see now you have to choose a mirror i was telling you before you do not have all the packages on this memory stick you need to download a lot of packages for uh, the installation to continue i will just keep it default i do not need proxy this is the place where you can choose to install a collection of software like Debian desktop environment, GNOME, whatever. You can choose also to install web server or SSH server, but this is something which I do not need at this moment. So I will choose only GNOME and GNOME flashback. Now it's receiving the files from the internet. As you can see, it's downloading and this will take longer. While it's doing the installation, if you are curious how this crucial disk looks inside, I got bored. This is what it has inside. So we are done with the installation. Remove the stick and continue. I forgot to tell you, in my situation you do not have cursor. You can use an external mouse if you want, but you can use also tab. You press tab until you have this highlighted. Continue. Now the system will reboot and Debian is starting up. So now we have the graphical interface. It's quite fast. You just log in to your username with the password you have put doing the installation, if you remember it. And we are on the new GNOME, which I do not like it at all. I will show you now how to, to switch to the other one. If you like it, you can use it like this. Log out, log out. Okay, so you select the user in this corner here. It opens up a menu. This is what I will choose, GNOME Classic, and you will see it looks different. Now we have applications menu, taskbar. It looks like a normal interface. The other one, the new GNOME interface, it's kind of strange for me. The only thing I will show you, which probably is relevant, let's open up Firefox. You can install also Chrome if you want. Let's test it with a 4K video. I'm not sure if it will work, but you never know.
so you won't be able to to play smoothly 4k for sure <laughs> now let's choose hd with hd there is no problem let's not forget this is a um, an 11 years old computer I would not expect with any operating system to be able to run 4K on it. You are able to do a lot of stuff like you would do with Mac. You can light up the keyboard, sound, mute, dim the screen and so on. So it's a full functional operating system which you can use to navigate and who knows maybe you can learn something else. Linux is the best option to install when you want to get as much as possible from the system. Do not think about Linux as it was a long time ago when you do not have a lot of drivers, you do not have a graphical interface. As you can see, with basic installation without adding anything else, I was able to navigate, to go to YouTube, to watch. It's okay. So, if you want to revive an old computer, and you do not want to install Windows on it, which, by the way, will work without any problems, you can use Linux. Pop sounds. That's it for today. I've showed you how to install Linux on an old machine. This is 11 years old MacBook Pro, and it still has a good life ahead if you are taking in consideration small, I don't know, hiccups like you cannot watch 4K on it, but this is not necessarily important. If you want more about Linux and about how to use it, let me know. I can do special videos about that. You know what to do if you liked it and if you didn't, no problem. Feedback is feedback. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.